Right. Welcome back. Uh, almost come to the end of this chapter. Just a few points. Uh, hold on. Let me just present. Okay. So we've been talking about Nehemiah, right, and how he was able to build the wall. Now look at the outcome of what happened from when he led this entire project, right? Nehemiah chapter 6, 15 and 16, it says, the people saw great success. After 52 days of work, the entire wall was finished on the 25th day of the month of Elul. When our enemies in the surrounding nations heard this, they realized that they had lost face since everyone knew that the work had been done with God's help. Remember the vision? The vision was, God is with us. God will enable us. And in the end, with the, with the mission, the values, all of that incorporated, the people themselves knew that this was accomplished because God was with them. Right? So powerful that is. Nehemiah didn't go and tell the enemies, God is with us. They realized it. But when he shared the vision, he shared it with the people. He said, God is with us. We can do it. Nothing can stop us. In the end, they realized it. right? And so that's why it's very important that we keep reiterating the vision, have certain values and certain cultures, and walk with that. We can achieve great things, right? Uh, just a few more points uh, on this chapter. Very important. Uh, let's go down. Uh, let's go into the next point, right? Uh, that's just a sample uh, work culture that you can read about later. But history is important. Capture it and repeat it, right? So Judges chapter 2, 7 through 11, right? Can we read that? So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord which he had done for Israel. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died when he was 110 years old, and they buried him within the border of his inheritance at Timna, Timnath, Hills in the mountains of Ephraim or on the north side of Mount Gash, when all the generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord nor the work which he had done for Israel. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals. Look at this verse, verse 10. A very sad verse. When all the generations had been gathered to their fathers, that means all of them had died and passed on. Another generation rose who did not know the Lord and did not know the work that God did for the people of Israel. So nobody shared it. Nobody sat down, made their children sit and say, hey, listen, we were in Egypt for about 400 years. Then with one in one day, God brought us out of Egypt, right? We were, and when we came out of Egypt, there was a big sea. And God parted the seas into two. We walked on dry land. Then we didn't have enough food. God sent food from the heavens. We didn't have water. There was a rock that followed us. And the stream of water followed us wherever we went. Our, even our sandals did not wear off. God did great miracles where we were. So follow the Lord. He's, no, they didn't do anything. They didn't teach the next generation. And so the verse 11 says, Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals. Now whose fault is it? Was it their fault or was it the fault of the, of the generation that was above them? All they had to do is share and impart. History is important. We got to capture it. We got to repeat it, right? Now we don't live in the past. We don't keep talking about history, right? We got to look ahead, right? 
but when we when you know all the mistakes that we've made all our success stories our failures the journey that we've gone through it's very important to share it right to the to people right look at uh, some of the examples right also history uh, helps us to see the progress we have made and every small success inspires us to move forward right now look at moses he did he make mistakes yes right but he pushed on right and he writes about his own mistakes these are mistakes i made look at peter did he make mistakes yeah do, do you think it came up to his mind yes but he looked on further right look at apostle paul did he make mistakes yes and only once he writes about his own account right he says you know i was a sinner like this like this i think it is in galatians he says these are the things that i did wrong <clears throat> but by god's grace he called me to be in the ministry only once so history is important but we don't live in the past right we look at what you know we can't live in the glories of the past hey i did this that time okay it's good what's ahead paul didn't say i started five churches in galatia now that's enough no so what's ahead and in timothy he says that's the most you no know, by reading that itself he's almost going to be killed he's old he's going to die he says i press on to know more of god i said paul how much more you want to know god you done so much enough just go in peace no i press on for the prize that he has for me forgetting what is behind right now forgetting means he didn't forget the churches right? forgetting the glories of the past right all the churches planted all the miracles and the missionary work okay all that is there i've raised up a next generation the timothys and the titus and all of them i'm pressing on for what is ahead right so when at the opportune time tell relevant stories narrate stories from the past laugh about mistakes made but always remember to narrate stories in a positive manner never share stories that can put people down encourage them lift them up right use teachable illustrations and that's what uh, jesus did right uh, when i share about times when i've led worship there are times i've shared with you right so many times right uh, the mic has moved off the guitar has stopped i've forgotten the scale of the song which is which scale is the song on right or oh, sometimes you know the lyrics have gone from verse 1 to verse uh, next have gone to verse 3 directly So we make those mistakes but we learn from them we can laugh about it learn from it right and then how did i improve myself to get better at what i'm doing right it's not like i i did a mistake and then okay leave it there no you improve yourself right so tell relevant stories i always share with young people right i was from yesterday at church i was sharing with there were a few young guys so we were at the vip bank we were talking and uh So I was talking to young guys from one of our colleges here, all in their early twenties. I was, you know, I was so encouraged to see them. They are coming to church. All friends from different parts of they are not from Bangalore. So no, you know, parents are not saying go and sit in church. But they are coming on their own. And one one guy said, you know, we really need some Bible teaching in our college. How can we start? And I was like, wow. I look at this young guy 21 odd years old saying we need some bible teaching in the colleges and he's you know, just sharing those things i began to share a few stories of how i was able to you know just start these small groups and he was so happy he said okay let me try it out but i told him i just in the half an hour break you know 10 minutes but eventually that grew became like a small group and people would come people were uh, you know outside they were very happy they showed themselves happy but inside they were all hurting broken right so this is something that i did and he was sharing yeah maybe i'll try it right and that story it was a simple story right but it invigorated him it's like wow 
than even I can do. Right. So, so these stories can, it's just a way of helping the next generation, right? encouraging them. Right. And uh, we must understand to use history correctly, use to learn from it, but never let it hold you captive. Meaning, when you when you talk about history and you're talking about things that happened in the past, don't let it hold you captive. Oh, because I failed in this area. So then I'm never going to do it again. No. When you talk about history, it should spur you to action. Oh, I, I can do this more better. Right? I can, I can, you know, if it's if it's preaching, if it's teaching, five years back I did it this way. Maybe the next five years, coming next five years, I gotta get better at it. And so let me learn from my mistakes, what I made in the past, and improve myself. Right? Everyone getting me, right? You're getting me, yeah. Okay. Oh. Success stories, next point. Success stories are invigorating. Share them. Right? Proverbs 25, 25. As cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a far country. When, as an organization, uh, success stories are invigorating, meaning they they encourage everyone. Right? Uh, we celebrate people, celebrate teams, celebrate progress. I remember, I'll share this example that happened, right? Uh, and then we'll go into the next chapter. Uh, I joined uh, after my college. Uh, I wanted to work for a while, and so, um, so I joined this call center. Right, so I was taking calls, and it was an American inbound call center. So people would call in. But one of the things in this organization was they always had, um, you know, these. Uh, what do you call them? Those. Um, certain targets and they had competitions right between teams so there were maybe seven eight teams and there were competitions whoever wins the entire team will get goodies right so since it was an american company they would uh, send in you know all these goodies and all of those things so say if our team wins we would the entire team so we have maybe 15 people in our team the entire team gets it now there was a season where I'm talking about 2005, where they, you know, the they would send us. They would say, okay, whoever wins this, it was every two weeks. So whoever wins the, this two weeks competition will win a home theater. 2005 will win a handy camera, right? Those those old handy cams which used to be there, or they would win a, a backpack or a, or a headphones. Right, so always there were goodies, right? And these competitions were there. And I remember, I was people were actually, you know, they would get these sleeping bags and they would sleep in the conference room because they want to sleep two, three hours and go back to calls, right? Uh, and it was intense, right? They said, "You work, you work. You want it, you have to do it." But I remember we we just all our team we got together and we came up with ideas. So, how, so we, we made sure that two people would never take a break at the same time, right? And things like that, right? And we were so captivated. The vision was this week, you know, it's a DVD player. Okay, if we win, all fifteen of us get DVD players, right? Uh, these are like the proper DVD system. Um, and we would really work hard. And most of the time, we win. We won it. There were targets that we reached, which were, you know, so if, if, it, if, it, if the target was maybe 70, uh, we would reach 110, 120, right? Because we would put in more than 110% in our work. But what, what I remember from that is that, you know, uh, these when, when I when the next teams would come in, so every time there would be new people coming in, we would share these stories. Hey, these are the things we have won. You better not slack off. You gotta work hard because you're part of the team now. Unless you're part of it, you're with us in mind and in in, in passion and zeal. Only then we can win it, right? And the new guys they started coming in. They started doing well. And really, success stories can really encourage people, right? But how you share it is very important, right? Okay, so let's go to the next chapter. 
which is any questions on this chapter any questions any thoughts so, yes so we see the thing of nehemiah yeah so that case like people are all with own mind and they are yeah. with and yeah. so if we are running a organization or anything people are against division like mm. they are not cooperating mm. how to handle that situation yes very true so so if you read the story of uh, nehemiah uh, what happens is in between people were not in one mind right in between when when uh, san balat said no we're not going to let you build a wall there were opposition there were enemies so some of them said let's go back to what i was doing well uh, uh, do we really need to build i don't want to risk my life so people were not 100% with the vision so at that time nehemiah had to come forward as a leader he didn't go and hide he had to come forward and say okay i know that this is what see this is what you're feeling this is what you're going through but remember god is on our side what did he do he reiterated the vision right so there will be times remember uh, organization ministry is about people people go through ups and downs people go through different challenges different you know one day they're with the vision one day they say i don't want this vision that's where our leadership skills come in right we we begin to share with them hey hold on now even during that people may leave and go right but you can't hold them right you can't say no you have to stay because if the vision has gone out of them you can't hold them back they're only going to become a burden what will they do they'll start sharing with others uh, we can't do this we can't do this remember what happened when the people of israel came out of egypt right one or two people said moses is gone he's not going to come back what we'll do we'll build a calf they did it right so if you are in leadership keep reiterating the vision if people want to exit out or the vision is gone let them go don't hold on to them but if you're part of an organization and you see what is happening like there's no unity the people are minding you know doing their own things you hold on to the values and the culture that you know the values that of the organization if they say 30 minute break you take 30 minute they may take one hour but you take that i'm talking about small things and these small things god sees and he will bring reward right now uh, if you're a leader reiterate if you're if you're under leadership be faithful right and and people will notice remember what did they say when they saw the wall built they realized that god is with them so they will see god bringing success upon you they'll say hey how is that how is it that you got it because god was with you right so uh, don't be don't be discouraged when you see people not in line with the vision or not in line especially in the corporate sector you do you you keep the your the organization vision in mind you keep the beliefs your values in line with god that's more than enough right Okay, any other questions? Any other thoughts? Okay, let's go to chapter five. This is also a very interesting topic. Um, competitive advantage and strategy. <clears throat> now, every organization, right? Uh, 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 luckily in ministry, there's no competitive advantage. There's no competition in ministry. But when you talk about an organization, definitely there is competition right so if you got two companies that have for example um, two motorbike companies or two car companies obviously there is competition right uh, you can have a mercedes or a bmw they both are high end brands and now they both are in competition okay you're doing this i will do this i will give you a better you know premium uh, quality i will give you better whatever there's competition on every side right now with competition we need new strategies right without a strategy we'll be the same there's no new product and there is no competition the the other organization may get better and better and better we are stuck here in the same place right so let's look at what is competitive advantage it is what makes your product and your service better and different from the others 
from the other competitors. That's competitive advantage. Why should I go? Example, right? Is this an example? Why should I go to buy a Apple product when I can buy a HP? And, and this is an example, right? No, don't say HP is not right. Okay. Why? Why do? Why is it? There's certain advantages, right? Is HP good? Very good. Is Apple good? Very good. What's the advantage? There are certain advantages. There are some certain services that are different, right? In each of these products. Now that is called competitive advantage. If you look around us, everything, right? It could be even chairs, right? Chairs, chair companies can have competitive advantage, right? So what competitive common differentiators include speed, greater value, cost, product, skill, raw materials, all of these things. But let's look at scriptural principles on competitive advantage, right? scriptural principles to undergird our professional knowledge and to practice competitive advantage. Now, remember, there's nothing wrong in competition. Healthy competition is good. Right? There's nothing wrong in it. But there are biblical principles that we must keep in mind. Number one, know what you are against. Right? Uh, I love this verse in Luke 14, 28 to 33. Let's read that. Luke 14, 18, 14 28 to 33. Uh, Luke 14, 28 to 33. If one of you is planning to build a tower, you sit down first and figure out what it costs to see if you have enough money to finish the job. If you don't, you will not be able to finish the tower after laying the foundations, and all who see what happened will make fun of you. You begin to build but can't finish the job, they will say. If a king goes out with 10,000 men to fight another king, who co comes against him with 20,000 men, he will sit down first and decide if he is strong enough to face that other king. If he isn't, he will send messengers to meet the other king to ask for terms of peace while he is still a long way off. In the same way, concluded Jesus, none of you can be my disciples unless you give up everything you have. Yeah, so... When we read this, Jesus is so practical. What's he saying? Count the cost. There is a cost. Imagine a king is going on battle. He's got 10,000 people. But he gets to know that the enemy side has 20,000 people. The wise thing to do is, hey, let me go and make things right. Let me see if I can uh, you know, have a discussion and see if this matter can be resolved. Everything, every battle puts lives at stake. The pursuit of organizational vision includes or involves a cost. That is a price we must pay, right? When, uh, when, we, when you know what you're up against, right, there's a cost. If I want to start a business or I want to start a ministry, there are certain things that I have to do. Right? I need to know, I have to have enough sufficient funds. I need to know how to start, where to start, what are the legalities, uh, what I must do, what I must not do. Know what you're up against. Right. So if you're starting a, a business, right, find out what is already there in the market. Right? So for example, you're going to start a laptop business okay, or a, or a cycle business. Find out what's there in the market. Don't just start. I find out what is the cost, what is uh, what is retail, how does it come to the market, how how does it go into the uh, you know to the regular shops? How do I do it? Find out ways, right? Learn about it. Secondly, compete, but compete in a clean and a fair manner. Second Timothy two five says, an athlete who runs in a race cannot win the prize unless he obeys the rules. It is not enough just to finish the line 
what is important also the rules to be obeyed now imagine a runner okay there are many things while competing in a race imagine the runner is standing they you know they're doing a 100 meter race and before the gunshot you know one of the runners start off what happens immediate disqualification why because he has not followed the rules. Now he may have practiced 10 years for that race. And he's come there, he's nervous, and he starts early, disqualified. 10 years gone down the drain. He'll have to come back again. Okay, now what about if he starts running and he decides to go to the other, he doesn't keep his track, he decides to go to the other person's track. What happens? Either he gets disqualified or he's going to trip and fall. Because you can't do that. He's going to waste time doing that. Okay, three. What if he, the person starts off very well, but he decides, okay, no, I don't want to race. I don't want all of this. Somewhere, you know, in a 200 meter race, imagine 100 meters he has finished. Oh, and then he realizes, oh, there's another 100 meters. I forgot it's a 200 meter race. There's no use. You can't go and tell the uh, person in, who was in, in the Olympics, you can't tell them, actually, I forgot, I thought it's 100 meters. They'll say, go and sit down. Over. So you compete, but you compete in a fair, clean and fair manner. Right? Um, and, and nowadays, when you look at sports, there's so much of unfairness that's happening. And I, was re I was reading this article recently about um, the women's swimming that uh, it was like it's like the olympics so this young girl she had started when she was about six years old swimming she wanted to be a champion and a lot of sacrifice a lot of hard work and she won a lot of medals and trophies and it came to the final uh like right now she's in her prime and uh, and what happened was a transgender meaning a man who identifies as a transgender has joined the race Okay, all are women. This one is a man who's identified as a transgender, and she's and he, they, and he's partaking in that swimming competition, and he beats the world record. And this girl is saying, "All my life, I've how can you have a man come and compete in the ladies?" Section? No, and she was so broken, you know, years of sacrifice and. And it's you know it, it, the media took it up. It become it became a big issue because it's not clean. It's not fair, right? When you and I are in business, in ministry, in an organization, compete with, with one another, but be clean, be fair, right? Right. Develop a winning strategy. Proverbs twenty four five and six. It's better to be wise than strong. Intelligence outranks muscle any day strategic planning is the key to warfare to win you need a lot of good counsel now strategy is a military term right uh, for war and all of that planning of movement of troops and how to you know uh, move ahead in battle now when you look at you know even moses when he brought the people out of egypt he had a bit of a strategy Yes, he said, okay, we'll go this way. But when Joshua came in, the strategies were implemented more effectively. Right? Now, a, a winning strategy is our plans and ways on how you can achieve your goal. A lot of input is required in that. Right? Now, a strategy would involve talking to people, talking to customers, talking to, you know, survey the market, get good advice. Strategy is important. So, for example, look at this. And if you want to start a church, you want to start your own ministry, you want to start your own, you know, your own church. Can you start without a strategy? You can, but it's not going to get you anywhere. You need a strategy, right? So, what do you do? You go, you check. Okay, where is where can I start a church? Okay. You got the place, okay. 
what should I take? Should I take it on a monthly basis? Should I rent the place on a monthly basis? Or should I hire it for, you know, once a week? Okay, strategy. Two, what is the people that I'm targeting? Youth, families, or everyone? Okay, everyone. What are some of the events I'll do? Right? What are some of the ways I'm going to reach out? What are the sermons I'm going to preach? How is the flow of this uh, service going to be? These are all strategies that you need to apply. Start church. We cannot just say, okay, I started my church. No, you've got to have a strategy. Yes? If you want to start a business, you have to have a strategy. You've got to have a capital, meaning you, initial funds. You need to have all the legal authorities and legal papers, everything that is required. You need to have the okay from the government, right? From, from the legal thing, everything should be okay. And then you implement your strategy. Right? Without a strategy, don't try to start anything, right? And over time, those strategies can change. What you did five years back doesn't mean you have to use the same strategy again. Change those strategies, right? Excuse me. So what's important is have a strategy. Next one. Goliath is not your real enemy. Fear is. Uh, uh, we'll not read that verse, but let me just explain and share my thoughts, right? Fear. Now, there were trained people in the army who were standing and watching Goliath, and they were in fear. Right? They were trained. But they were fearful. Now, what happened? David was not trained, but he was not fearful. He was bold. Right? So sometimes fear is not the, you know, uh, hold on. Sometimes Goliath is not your enemy, fear is. Goliath was big. Was, was able to you know defeat anyone. He publicly said, whoever wants to come against me, come. I will defeat them. I will kill them. So the armies of Israel were all in fear. Right? Now, do you think that they could have defeated Goliath, the armies of Israel? If they tried, they didn't even try. But David, he said, no, it's okay. I'm going to go. He was not fearful. What did he tell King Saul? Saul, King Saul, don't worry. I have killed the lion, I've killed the bear with my own hands. That reading that gives me goosebumps. Can you picture killing a lion with your own hand? These are wild lions. He killed the lion with his own hand. He killed the bear with his own hands. So when he looked at Goliath, Fellows, maybe what, 12 feet high? For him, it was nothing. Why? Because maybe David is thinking, hey, I've seen the I've seen a lion up close and personal. He's I've sat on it. I've killed it and I've sat on it. He's not stronger than a lion. I've seen the bear. You see, a bear has these claws. They are able, they can cut through your entire body, they can cut you into pieces, the body. A human body, if it really gets a good grip, it can cut you into pieces. I've killed a bear also. So Goliath, sorry, David was not fearful at all. And that's what got him the victory. Sometimes we look at how big Goliath is. That's what happened to the Israelites. Did they win battles? They won many battles. But fear gripped them. David said, no, he's nothing. God is with me, number one. And two, I've I've seen worse things than this. Sometimes when we are in the organization, when we are working, right, the fear of failure, the fear of the unknown can leave us in a place of inaction. What if I try this and I fail? What if I do this and I fail? It's okay to fail. Uh, you know, I'm sure uh, you've heard this, right? Fear, failure is the stepping stone to success. Failure is the stepping stone to success. You fail, next time you can succeed. So don't be afraid to fail. 
Like, now don't keep only failure in your mind and say, okay, when am I going to fail? <laughs> no, if everything's going well, good, right? Keep going. Right? But when failure comes, look at it as, okay, uh, it's a stepping stone to success. Don't stop. One idea could be a good, can make you a winner, but another idea can make you, you know, can cause you to fail. But doesn't mean you don't have any more ideas. You keep doing it. You keep improving yourself, right? Look at this. Leverage your experience with the lions and the bears to face Goliath. I love this. The odds were heavily against David. No one in their right mind, a shepherd against a trained soldier. I would say a miner against a, a, a trained soldier. No one would have thought that David will go and defeat. But what did David do? He tapped into the history that he had with God. He said, I killed the lion, I killed the bear. Goliath was no different for him. He had advantage. He had competitive advantage. Every small success that you have, use it and build on it. Right? Remember the first time uh, you know, I was asked to share and uh, it was one of the locations, so I went there and uh, was really prepared, and and I shared, right? But I don't know how it went. Time went really fast, and, and within 30 minutes, I finished my sermon. So it usually take 45 minutes, but 30 minutes, and I didn't know what to do, so I said, okay, worship team, come up, and I closed. Uh, but that 30 minutes, I remember I, I, I felt I shared well. So I went back home and I and I said, okay, 30 minutes was good, but I was quite discouraged. Why didn't I do 45 minutes? Right. But on the other side, I kept telling myself, okay, 30 minutes, at least they got a good 30 minute sermon. So you take the success from it, but you also take areas of learning. Okay. So you got to add to the sermon, right? You've got to make it 45 minutes, make sure that it's engaging, make the sermon, you know, how you speak, how you give your examples. Uh, where to give examples, what kind of examples to give. These are things that we can learn. Build on it. You know what you're good at, that becomes your competitive advantage. Right? And especially when you have successes in the past, use it for your benefit. Right? Next. <clears throat> Sometimes just one pebble is all it takes. We're talking about David. David's strategy against Goliath was simple. David used what he was good at. Remember what uh, King Saul said? Okay, so David, you're forcing me. You want to go? Go. Okay, put on all of these armory, the shield and the sword. And I'm sure, look at look at David. He was a young boy. Maybe to carry that sword would have taken all his energy or that shield would have stopped him, right? To be fast or be quick. And he took out everything and he said, no, this is not me. This is not this is not the way I can you know go and battle against Goliath. All I need are a few pebbles, a few stones, and I'll use my sling. This is what I am comfortable with. Right? You are comfortable with the sword. The army of Israel, my brothers are comfortable with the sword. And you know, all of these armory, they are comfortable. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with a sling. Now, can you picture what King Saul would have said? Why? At least wear the armor and go. He's saying, No, this is this is my strength. Right? So, what is it? What looked like a disadvantage was really David's competitive advantage. Most of and most of all, David moved out in faith empowered by God. Now, all David did was used one sling and one stone or pebble to defeat Goliath. He used it as an advantage. Now, just picture, what if David was forced to go with the shield and the sword? By the time anything would have happened, by the time he would have reached Goliath, Goliath may have thrown the spear straight at him. But here he was flexible. He knew, okay, I can move around. I can do it this way. This is me. And he used it to his advantage. You don't have to be big. You don't have to be better. If you can outdo your competition in skill, 
agility, innovation, and service. You don't always have to be bigger. If you're skilled, if you're skilled, you can get better. Right? You can, you know, in skill innovation, you can improve in that area. Right? It's not always about being bigger. Right? So <clears throat> Psalms 27 is wonderful. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. Finally, get God's counsel. Get the Lord's counsel. Uh, your key to competitive advantage and strategy. Right? Consult the Lord. Get his counsel. There are times God reveals through dreams, through visions. He can reveal into your spirit what to do, what not to do. And in the Old Testament, if you look at the story of Jacob, a wonderful story of how God intervened in Jacob's life. Now, Jacob had ran away and he was living uh, probably in a little bit of guilt because of what he did to Esau. Uh, but God spoke to him in a dream. God revealed to Jacob what he must do. Right? And he aligned himself to that. And so when you talk about this, uh, you know, the speckled flock, flocks and uh, and the striped and the speckled, God gave him the strategy. God gave him the idea. And you can read that later on. And, uh, you know, he, God spoke to him. God revealed to him what to do and how to do it. And it was done. Same like Nehemiah. God spoke to him, revealed to him. Right? Uh, I mean, even if you look in the book of Joshua, God spoke and revealed. Right? So be open to unusual strategies. Right, just a moment. See much more there. Okay, just three more points. We'll finish it so that next class we can go to the next uh, chapter. Okay, be open to unusual strategies. Now think of this: uh, Joshua chapter six, the walls of Jericho. God tells Joshua what? Okay. You've come to the place, there's this huge wall. We all know the story. God tells Joshua, go and break into the wall. What does God tell Joshua? Walk around the wall. But imagine Joshua saying, why would we do that? We can just go and break portion of the wall and enter. No. So what is it? We are thinking small. Could they have made one small hole in the bottom of the wall and entered in and gone? They could have. But God said, no. God said, Joshua, you go for seven days. You go around the wall. You sing and shout. No, first, you go quietly. And then on the seventh day, on the seventh time, you blow your trumpets and praise the Lord, and I will give you victory. Unusual strategy. Right? Even God told, uh, you know, uh, David, when you hear the, the leaves, I forget the chapter and the verse, but when you hear the leaves, the sound of the leaves coming, know that I am with you. Right? In another place, God tells Joshua, Joshua says, God, let the sun stand still because I need to defeat them. And God does it. So God is a God who's open to unusual strategies. Right? We don't keep him... We don't say, God, you have to work this way. Be open to God's unusual strategies. Right? It's normally something that we may not have thought of, but be open to it. Okay. <clears throat> Down, but not out. Come out with a new strategy. Remember, now, there will be times we will lose. There will be times we may fail. But remember, you're not out. Come back with a new strategy. Now, when you look at ministry and the times that I've come up with some ideas, and many times it has not worked out. Many, many times. Many plans. Uh, it has not worked out. Right? But you you feel discouraged. But you're not out. You come back. You come back with a strategy. You come back with a new idea. And you try and implement that. And see if that works. Even if that doesn't work, come back again. Work on your strategy. We sometimes we fail because we may not be doing things according to the strategy. Once we get that winning strategy, hold on to it and keep trying. Don't let failure discourage. Right? 
finally, time and chance happen. Be alert, act quick, and capture the moment. Right? Ecclesiastes was 9 and 11. Let's read that. I'll return on the so under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the path to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill. But time and chance happen to them all. Yes. So understand that timing and circumstances are important. Good times, there are good times, good circumstances, bad times, bad circumstances, and they come to all, whether you're in business, whether you're in ministry, you may have good times, bad times. In all of this, what is required is wisdom to handle both. Right? Recognize the opportune times, circumstances, and capture the moment. Act quick. So good times, act in wisdom. Good situations, act in wisdom. Difficult times, difficult situations, act in wisdom, right? Uh, now, if you're translating this into an organization, you know, usually organizations go through ups and downs, right? You may have times when work is very seamless, but then suddenly you have times when you have to put in those extra hours, right? Act in wisdom at that time. Don't get upset and you know, say, you know, why are you making me work and all of those things. There are times, there are seasons, act in wisdom, ask God for favor. And uh, and it's, as it says, you know, capture the moment. Right? Be quick to act on those moments. Right. Okay. So we'll stop here. I know we did quite a lot. Uh, but what we'll do next class is we, before we go in, we can uh, have, if you have any questions, any thoughts, uh, if you want, want to just look at a few more points from this chapter, we can do that. Uh, and then next next week, uh, we'll get into the next chapter, which is chapter six, organizational structure and design. Right? All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, have a great week ahead. I'll see you next Monday. God bless.